Welcome back to Class Geely Scholars. We're diving into part two of this inspirational combo with our pro, Candace Aaron. Now, Candace is about to dive into her pivot. You know, that's the thing. Everybody's going to hit it, whether it's personal, professional, or a combination of both. You're going to hit that pivot in your life. So what do you do? How do you deal with it? What do you learn from it? How can you use it to propel you forward, especially when you set goals? Now, speaking of goals, we're going to talk about how even at the age of 16, the goals we set for ourselves are relevant in our 20s and um, <laughs> even in our 30s now. So it is important for you to set goals for yourself. And it might sound cliche. You know, people tell you to do it, write the vision out. But seriously, there's a reason why you have that goal set for yourself. So tune in, listen up, and we'll talk soon. I think, <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's so on point because that's that's what our students need to hear. That's what anybody needs to hear, honestly, especially if you're black. But our students need to hear that because as they transition from being uh, in school, whether it's high school or college, those jobs are going to put you to the test, right? And 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 please interrupt me if you want to attest to the pivots that we take in life you can have a game plan for your life we commend you we want you to have a game plan for your life that that means that you're critically thinking about the decisions that you want to make to get to a place whether it's entrepreneurship or you want to rise to the ranks in a corporation whatever but there are going to be moments where things are going to happen that you didn't expect life secret just told i mean seriously and you have to understand how to pivot but the key part of pivoting and this is what i'm learning at 30 something years old the key part of pivoting is literally what you just said knowing yourself right yeah so if if i know that i have this opportunity in front of me that i didn't expect and it could be a good one it could be a bad one it could be just like you know what i need this experience from this job that i never wanted to work at or this corporation i never wanted to work at but i need that experience let me go ahead and do it but if I don't have any understanding of who I am, my purpose, and how it intertwines with this opportunity, mm -hmm. you're, you literally are either going to waste time or stress yourself out or both. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you can get stuck in something for a long time because you thought this was what I'm supposed to be doing because you didn't know yourself. You didn't know yes. what you could tolerate and what you can't. You didn't know the 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 uh, the skill set that needed to be acquired, but Maybe you learned it. Maybe you learned the skill set that they said that you need to learn, but you didn't know how to apply it to your purpose. So right. you're trying to move forward with goals the whole time. You literally are just taking what's given to you. Yeah. You find and, yourself in a place of being complacent. Yes. Yes. And also knowing your flaws. One of the things that I commend um, my younger brother for is him being able to say, I know myself and I know the flaws that I have, that I'm not able to do that. I'm not mm -hmm. able to. And at first it was like, okay, you find an excuse. You know what I mean? Like, are you looking for a cop out and an excuse? But after like really sitting down with him and seeing the game plan that he had, he's like, no, that's my weakness. And that's a flaw of mine that will in the long run caused me to get fired or cause a rap or a riff rap or some type of issue. So instead of doing this, I'm going to do this. And it yeah. was like, oh, okay, he had another plan. It wasn't yeah. just, I'm not doing this cause I don't feel like doing it. And cause I know that I don't feel like, I don't like getting up in the morning, so I ain't doing it. No, right. it wasn't that. It was like another game plan, understanding his flaws and understanding who he is. But then also, um, even if those things to kind of piggyback off of what you said, um, one of the things that I did, uh, I worked with young people. I was a second grade teacher's assistant. I worked in the infant toddler room. Um, <clears throat> I worked at daycares. I've, uh, you know, done babysitting and things like that. And all of those things are connected to what I do do. I'm a choreographer. I'm a dance instructor. Wait. I'm a four-time award-winning choreographer okay. during the pandemic. Thank you, darling. Um, I'm a dance instructor. I've, you know, been put on platforms where I've taught open classes at the Kennedy Center. I just recently did the launch of the uh, Frederick Douglass Bridge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just different things like that or as an instructor. That's just my instructor uh, resume. We could talk about my dance and acting that okay. and modeling resume. That's a whole nother resume, but... Um, 
the side note really quick yeah. nobody's going to give you praise the way that you give yourself praise when you huh. accomplish things it's nothing wrong with giving yourself props and kudos but understanding it's the difference between giving yourself kudos and then remaining remaining humble because there's still a lot for me to learn I'm still in the posture of when I get in a room even if they don't even know how to plie. I can still learn from a person that knows nothing about dance that I'm able to pour into them dance, but I know they don't know anything about dance, but I can learn from them. That's a certain type of posture, but I'm going yeah. to give myself praise because ain't nobody yeah. going to praise me like I praise me. Yeah. Period. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what I was saying. Um, <laughs> being in, a, um, in those different settings, coaching uh, dance teams and cheer teams and working with so many young people throughout the DMV area, as well as the um, Southern California area. Um, they all were beneficial in like school settings, daycare settings and stuff. They were all beneficial to what I do and how mm -hmm. I work with young people because it gives me a better eye opener and background on behavior and how to discipline and educating because everybody learns differently, even in the dance industry, even in the fine arts, just because you might be a person that picks up on boom cats, this person picks up on movement, that person picks up on numbers, eight counts and whatever. Yeah. Now, eight count counting, my mm -hmm. students will tell you that is not, if she ain't count her money, <laughs> counting is not her strong suit. Saying this is one, two, three, four. That's not my strong suit. But I've learned to work on it because, and I'm better at it now because I've put myself in positions where I've had to do that. Yes. I literally put myself in uncomfortable positions and working jobs that I had to do that. But I understood the benefit of it. But I also gave myself a timeline really for real god gave me the timeline right right right. <laughs> i didn't want to leave this one job i had this one job and they were paying real good i had benefits um i like the atmosphere the parents loved me i loved my boss like everything was like just peachy i mean yeah. like <laughs> christmas bonuses and all kinds of stuff like mm -hmm. it was peachy but God was like, yeah, no, I told you four years. Yeah. And this is your fourth year. And I was like, no, I can do one more year. And halfway through the fourth year, things begin to get complicated. Mm -hmm. And it was like, until I said, okay, God, you got it. That's when the release of the complications happened. And then something, and I'm like, but what, what am I about to do? He's like, I'm about to show you what you're getting ready to do. And then that, the next thing was a total leap of faith yeah. because I was homeschooling a family. Like what? <laughs> Where did that <laughs> come from? But the benefits of that to the Candace Aaron movement, to um, just, Jet, just Jet Tay, to mm -hmm. um, me taking my life back and my health and being able to not only be a living testimony for my health and you know losing over 65 pounds during a pandemic when everybody else put on weight I right. took weight off um and when my whole entire I had two roommates my whole entire household had COVID and I was the only one that didn't get COVID and mm -hmm. I was taking care of them holistically no antibiotics and things like that taking care of them holistically still protecting myself and got the COVID out of their system holistically thank you very much um but it was because of me taking that job that I did take to my other family, like my extended family, my mom, my, well, my, that's not my extended family, but my mom, my yeah. aunt, um, my grandmother, God rest her soul, and, you know, my brothers and them uh, using the same holistic things that are beneficial for them that opened up a door for me where it's like, dang, I'm interested in nutrition. I'm interested in the body and how blood works and how it flows through your body. Um, I know little facts that it's like, where did that even come from that makes mm -hmm. me like be up at three in the morning? That just, that nail, um, and I'll go on the record to say that nail has me like, I'm going back to school for nutrition. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's just something else that's an added bonus. But then how is that beneficial to the Candace Aaron movement? All right, I'm a dancer. I'm a dance instructor. 
I am about the Candice Aaron movement. It is about creating artists that are whole, mentally, mm -hmm. spiritually, and physically whole. That nutrition is incorporated in that. That's injury mm -hmm. prevention. That's if you're putting the right things in your body, spiritually and physically, eating the right things and working out, you're preventing the injuries. You're preventing the mental breakdowns. You're yeah. preventing... Um, you're pulling up the childhood trauma because we all have childhood trauma. Trust mm -hmm. me, everybody, your mama and them, Pookie, everybody has childhood <laughs> trauma. If you choose to deal with it, most of the issues that you have as you get older all stem from yeah. the childhood trauma. And it can be as simple as you had to have an uh, emergency surgery when you were four years old. That's yeah. traumatizing, being four years old having surgery. Deal, you have to deal with that and unpack that at some point in time, but you can't be an artist that's able to move forward um, and be a leader that's able to move forward if you don't know what you need to put in your body to help you to do those things, to help you emotionally, that gives you the emotional support because it's all connected. Yeah. Food is connected to, like if you're, say you have a, a gluten allergy um, or a corn allergy, um, if you're constantly putting that in your body and you had that allergy, you're super emotional. Mm -hmm. Your mind is like not clear. You're not mm -hmm. able to function and clear the uh, think clearly the way that God has intended you to. And that's because you have things, you've been placing things in your body that are causing some type of fog and gunks. You're not hearing God clearly. And you're like, well, how is it that they're hearing God? Well, what did you eat today? Yeah. Yeah. What did you eat today? What did you spiritually eat? Did you even take the time to stop what you're doing to even allow God to say something to you? Because it don't always happen like that. And it doesn't right. sound like, what are you doing today? Right. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah. you did you take that moment in time to say, God, clear my heart and my mind. God, clear, just consistently say, clear my heart and my mind of anything that is not of you so that I can hear you clearly. Just taking five minutes just to mm -hmm. do that two minutes, a minute just to do that. And then eventually it will get there. But then if you're eating junk, if you're constantly putting pizza and oils and this bad fat into your system, you're adding going to your own emotional gunk and childhood yeah. trauma. And then you're putting this stuff in it. And then it's you all the way up here. And God is like, you ain't even leave no space for me. Girl, I know that wow. that's, a whole, <laughs> that's a whole word and a whole relief. And it's it's so essential like you said you have to be spiritually physically and mentally balanced especially when you're trying to articulate your purpose right and see dance is one thing because it's it's an art but it's also you seeing somebody be so vulnerable about something that they have rehearsed practiced even if it's off the cuff and they're freestyle dancing that is a vulnerability because you got people that won't even two step in a club because they think somebody watching them and you know they might trip on their feet, you know, their own two feet. And, and you in the corner, right? You know what I'm saying? So when I see dancers, I'm like, it's an appreciation. It's 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 like, wow, you really have the courage to do what you just did. You, you know, you literally put it all on the floor. Yeah. You literally. Um this help keep, keep me sane as well too so god mm -hmm. therapy dance um yeah it, it it really did because um the things that you can't talk about that happened behind closed doors as a child when you get to the dance studio and you're able to move your body wow. like when your voice is being taken away from you I know what that feels like having your voice taken away from you on multiple occasions, meaning you don't have a safe space to speak freely and say what's really happening and what you really feel, or you don't know how to communicate that effectively. So you either internalize it or it comes out a different type of way. For me, it was internalizing it. Um, and no one knew, no one knew the thoughts or the emotions that I was really having. I only portrayed the high. How are you? Oh my gosh, be my friend. Let's go. We're going and we're moving and we're moving. But no one knew what was really happening behind closed doors. Um, but getting in a dance studio and learning, that's when you can release it all mm -hmm. and you can just let it go and actually allowing your emotions to run through your movement. 
Mm-hmm. That is so free and so therapeutic. And that's one of the things that um, I try to teach to my students, like use this, use this opportunity to let it all go because yeah. everybody feels like they're suffocating at some point in time. Yeah. So grasp for your air, go for your air, like reach for it and use this, release it, get it out of your system, get it off of your back. So when you walk out of this room, like as the sweat beads down your body, it's leaving your system and out of yeah. your pores. And when you walk out of this room, it's done. Like mm-hmm. you don't even have to go back there if you don't want to. Just yeah. let it go and let it move. And it's it's very vulnerable. Very vulnerable. I know some people that um it's difficult for them to dance in front of people because it's so vulnerable for them. Mm. And they're amazing dancers. Like before they hit the stage, their hands shake and they get butterflies. And it's like, somebody is like, well, why is it because everybody's watching you? You can't even see them because it's so dark and the lights are on. And you know, what is it? And it's like, nah, I'm, I am sharing a piece of me that I've held privately for so long that I'm now allowing you to have and that yeah it's it's that deep yeah it really is it's that deep yeah it's that deep yeah oh man yeah even even putting your things on social media like your art on social media to people who aren't dancers and like oh okay dancing again no like she's literally sharing a piece of her you get a whole series of just dancing in different places like you were just outside in different places you were in the kitchen yeah I was like hard that was hard because you can easily uh we live in a what's trending society Mm. so you can easily go into a place where it's like what am I about to do now what movements am I getting ready to do and then you start over analyzing and thinking the movements and then you lose sight over what the real reason for what it is that you're supposed to do oh catch that somebody needs yeah that. yeah um <laughs> because you're trying to fit into the cookie cutter of what society is saying and if God has created you to be a certain type of leader, there's no cookie cutter for it. Yeah. There, it's outside of the box. So though it might be trending at the hashtags, okay, cool means, but stay authentic to what it is that you know your purpose is. And that's anything, not just dance. Yeah. Because I did, and one of the reasons why I stopped it was like, I started seeing that I was repeating some of the same thing. And I was like, it's no longer authentic and I Mm -hmm. never want to put anything out there that comes even a slight inkling of of like not I am genuine about what I do and how I do it um genuine (laughs) it comes from it literally comes from my heart in the pit of my gut I you know I put my all into it and I never want it to come off like dang she's just doing it for the gram or she's just doing it for the likes or whatever. I could care less about the likes. It's more, for me, it's about you seeing it. As long as you see it and it hits home somewhere, even if it it make you be like, dang, she get on my nerves, but what's she about to do? Yeah. She dancing again, but let me watch it. It's not even for the likes. It's about, I want to be able to touch you at home where it makes your day go a, a better or it helps it hits home it hits that feeling something that you didn't want to talk about and it's like dang she helped me release that or yeah dang let me go on and face it or dang girl you got me crying today like it's yep. too early I've had that recently somebody yep. DM me and was like you posted that and you had me crying too early in the morning like what in the world and I'm like yep. the song was talking about love like <laughs> two people being in love and she's like I know but <laughs> I ain't gonna put all her business out yeah. there you know so it that's my reason my my reason so if it ever begins to come off like it's not authentic or Jane I'm like yeah I had yeah. to stop the dance everywhere I mean because it got to the point where I wasn't even planning to go nowhere and I'm like let's go to the <laughs> such and such place and I'm going to climb on this plate, on this thing. 
And then the movements and nothing was coming out for mm. real. It was the same type of movements. And it was like, I can't do this no more. This is done. Like this yeah. was cool. And that's, that was for that time. There's mm-hmm. a time and a place for everything. Yeah. That season is up. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And that's, that's, that's a good point though. When you're talking about being a purpose, because you can get so far in the weeds with something because it had a good momentum. But you got to know when to like move on to the next thing, you know, especially as a leader, like period, you know, and that's, that's the strength that you have to, you have to flex when you, uh, when you gain that strength, because enough is enough at some time, you know, everything, like you said, ain't for that moment or for every moment, I should say. So I think that's a really, really uh, strong skill set that you have to learn in a position of leadership and as a per- person of purpose. I wanted to touch on your journey in regard to going from high school to adulthood. And like, if, if you could just summarize the, the greatest thing that you had to overcome or something that was a huge takeaway for you looking back. Um, like even if, even if it's to the point where you, you could talk to freshman high school mm-hmm. Candace Mm-hmm. and say something what would it be knowing what you know now knowing that I know what I know now I didn't really have a plan mm-hmm. I never um in high school I was running and going with the flow it it was So just to kind of give a little real quick background, I went to a performing arts school here in the DMV area, Dick Ellington School of the Arts. Mm -hmm. Hmm, Very (laughs) big. Um, But I had the awesome opportunity to move to Los Angeles, California to dance with Debbie Allen and do some things in California. And fortunately, I have a really bold mama that... Mm -hmm. um, sees purpose in not just her children but in other people as well too because listen just as bold as she was for selling her house and moving across country so that I can do that um uprooting us uh you know we native Washingtonians through and through um that's who we are um it comes from a generation of native Washingtonians very rare to find in this area so to move to Los Angeles California was a big deal it cost a lot of riffraff in the family Um, but I didn't really have a plan. Mm -hmm. It was more so like, not things were handed to me because I worked for it. I I definitely worked for it, but I never thought past Debbie Allen. I -hmm. never thought past California. It was always like, I'm gonna go out here and then I'm gonna just make it. Yeah. And it's all of it's just going to fall into play but it didn't pan out that way. It was a lot of hardships. It was um, a lot of different things that I mean, no teenager should face while they're in school, let alone trying to balance school and like somewhat of a career, um, Mm -hmm. a lot of different things. So if I could say anything to that freshman me um, and freshmen out there, knowing what I know now create oh I mean pages of plans of different plans Mm -hmm. uh just like you got a plan a a plan b a plan c d e n f q r g (laughs) you know what I mean one two three three. (laughs) yes hashtag exclamation mark semicolons of plans Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I mean that um, of just different situations that could pan out different ways of different things that you might be interested in because um, I never understood the, I, I liked so many different things and I never understood that it was all connected. It wasn't until now that I had the understanding like, dang, all of, all of yeah. these things are connected to this and I can literally make this work for one major thing Mm -hmm. I just got to plug in all of these different things and take the time to do it so creating that plan for that um 
some of the greatest hardships that I had uh, being evicted and living in a hotel um, mm -hmm. and still having a balanced school, um, not understanding why I wasn't able to take classes anymore, um, dance classes anymore, but I had to focus on, you know, school. Mm -hmm. um, how come I lost my drive and my mm -hmm. motivation for, you know, because you hear no so long. You, you live in a, in a society because it's not just California, it's anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can have an agent here. I know I have plenty of young ladies that had agents and were going to like Bishop McNamara, going to different schools. Um, and they were like on the weekends traveling um, and doing stuff, but losing your motivation because you're traveling and you're going on auditions and they're telling you no. And mm -hmm. they're telling you no based off of just looking at you. That can be... I mean, that can literally rip your heart apart. It can yeah. make you feel like you are worth nothing. And tears don't move nobody in the right. industry. You a dime a dozen. You, right. You're just a, so what makes you stand out? So being able, that's one of the reasons why I just want to create these artists that are like whole, like you're able to be confident and stand in it. So even when you hear no 700 times, you still feel good about yourself. Like, all right, let's deal with it in and keep it moving. You still feel good about yourself to keep moving, to do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, is I, I um, hmm. yeah, that's to sum yeah. it all up. Like just yeah. really staying focused, pouring into yourself, but understanding the plan and creating a bigger picture. So these little plans that go to the big goal and the big goal, if the big goal changes 700 times, then so be it. As long as that you have a big goal, as long as you have these small plans, because for about, I would say about four or five years, I did nothing with dance nothing with the arts nothing I was just moving freely aimlessly to and fro not mm -hmm. doing anything getting myself into like all kinds of little debacles that could have been avoided if I just had a small plan something as simple as you know what I'll go to community college for this for two years because it will be beneficial for this just mm -hmm. to get the associates in that and then, you know what I mean? Or I'm going to work at this particular place because it would be beneficial to this. That way, not only am I providing for myself, but I can place this on my resume. Resume building was a big deal. I, I give myself kudos for that because my resume is like three pages long. If I printed out the, right, the real one, it's like three pages long um, to the point where my recent employer, my recent new employer was like, okay. <laughs> wait a minute and I had to like I and I gave them the modified version <laughs> but I'm and it wasn't like the thing of like oh you know I worked this job for a year and then left and it worked this job no they were extensive you know whatever and you could still call these people I still had these people's numbers when they changed their number they called text me like hey this is my new number you can still use me as a reference how are you doing I see you doing xyz um building bridges and not breaking them mm -hmm. never leaving on a bad term even we can agree to disagree we have separate opinions I apologize taking ownership and responsibility for your role if you were coming late every single time <laughs> taking responsibility like I'm sorry I was not punctual at all I understand yeah. why you're letting me go because I'm not punctual and you cannot rely on me but I appreciate the opportunity I appreciate you allowing me to even be in this space for three months or a year or two years um I'm grateful I've learned so much from it and keeping those connections is it okay if we stay in contact is it okay if I use you as a reference but you got to do your part as well too and have a plan yeah. This, as soon as you said that and you started talking about all the different plans, it literally ripped apart what my agenda was when I was transitioning from high school to college to whatever, because my plan was just that. Get good grades, graduate, get a good job, get some benefits, then I'll be happy. And it's like, uh-uh, 
if you think about how magnificently you're created, there's no person on this earth that is designed to only do one thing for their whole life. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're LeBron James and people know you for basketball. He is talented in other areas. There are things that he's probably curious about. Yeah. He's probably curious about different things. Platform. That's what's just a platform. You know? So yeah. we have to be able to articulate them, even if it's just writing it down at 16 years old, all the ideas I have. And like you said, it's amazing how 10 years later, you're looking at experiences that you had that kind of play into those things that you wrote down when you were 16. You probably yeah. only focused on one. Yeah. But you're having all these experiences that put this puzzle together. Like there's nothing coincidentally when you're talking about faith and when you're talking about what God created. Nothing is a coincidence. There's always balance. God is a God of balance. That's why nature is operates the way it does because it's things that have to balance themselves out. So... I think that's a good way to like close this because I agree. That's solid advice. <laughs> thank you so much. I no, appreciate thank you. you. Yeah. I appreciate you. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>